Um, I'm Elvis. Um, I'm native Shanghainese, which means that I was born and raised here, and also my parents also born and raised. Same to my grandparents. So I love Shanghai. It's my hometown. And uh, I actually is an ad man all the way from I graduate. Today, sorry, this year is my 20th anniversary getting into the business. Quite interesting. Yeah, this is my story. I live here. How were your last two months? It's like a bad dream. It's like a bad dream. And I think uh, a lot of things that you, you worry about, you had been worried about, came true. How so? What happened? I think just like uh, Yua Harari said, the, the bestseller, the author of the bestseller, uh, Homo Sapien. That guy said, actually, actually COVID didn't change anything. It just accelerating the change of the world. So you see that actually a lot of things changed. Sorry, accelerated because of that COVID, right? Um, a lot of people get locked uh, in different rooms and uh, it, be it fed by the government. You know what I mean? Um, and uh, the economy is slowed down because of that. Um, I feel that confidence is a big problem. The confidence of consumption, um, people maybe hesitate to spend. Um, and in terms of work, um, it's hard to predict what's going to be in the future. And it's very hard, as I, as I just discussed with you, in terms of manpower, how you plan the manpower, uh, to, to meet the needs of the market um, and how you predict um, the market trend for the future. You still can predict, but it creates a lot of difficulties for you. Mm. Yeah, and for the citizen, I don't have rights to have comments on the government, but I feel that actually um, people have doubt about how much restraint they will have on themselves um, when they go travel, uh, when they go in and out in their own compound, um, and even when they buy necessities for their living. So uh, these things all accumulated to, uh, to I call it confidence. It's a confidence issue. Uh, and I just discussed with you, maybe it's about how the government can quickly carry out some policies to boost the economy. First thing first, to boost the confidence of these people, um, especially the younger generation, the 90s. How have you adapted during the two months? Um, have you, you obviously were only in your apartment, you can't go out, meet clients, you can't work in an office. How has it been? I can't. A um, couple of things. One is I'm doing advertising and more and more advertising is digitalized. Um, when it comes to the work itself, it's digitalized. When it comes to the relationship between us and client, we do all the meetings online. So actually, I'm even busier than before. All the way from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Endless con call. I even won some business through the COVID by pitching online to the client. So I think it become a new norm. Like you don't really physically meeting with client. Uh, you're building a new type of relationship with client. I don't think it's healthy. But uh, in short term, it still work because you need to get the ball rolling. But for long term, for a healthy relationship, I still believe that face-to-face -face meeting, shaking hands, sitting in the same room, talking to each other, gonna help. Yeah, so short, in short, short term, it's okay. For long term, I hope that the lockdown could be, could be totally lifted so we can meet with each other mm. and nutrate the relationship. That's a very interesting point that you mentioned because dinner, culture, drinking together is, is quite important for business, right? Mm -hmm. Especially here. And so 
all of this is very radically changing is what I understand. Yeah, I, I, this is something I worry about. I don't want to give people a feeling that it could be adapted easily into the digital space. Yeah. I, I don't like this and it's not human. It's not humanity. I, I, I feel, I, I, I hope that it could be, how to say that, bring it back to the right track. But there's a gap between my hope and the reality. I feel that it could be a new norm. It's cheaper. Cheaper, convenient, and they can find you anytime. <laughs> that, that sounds like the one thing that you have lost a lot seems to be quality of life. Yeah, it's a quality of life. It's going down. It's going down because you are, you are worried, because you are less confident about the future. That's why in order to keep the living condition of yourself, you have to work harder. And then your quality of life, of course, is going down. At the same time, you're thinking about, I have a two years old kid in the apartment with my wife. My wife quit her job in order to take care of him because the nursery is all closed. And kid also needs to run around. Sorry. It's okay, it's all right. The kid also needs to run around. They also need to, you know, embrace the nature and they have to lock. So you need to make up for him by doing something else, even more time with him. So the living condition definitely is going down. Although maybe the same salary, but your living condition going down in terms of this, in terms of the inflation. Group buy definitely charge you more. Right? It's the, mar the market here is not open market at all. It's semi-planning market. You know what I mean? So the living condition definitely going down. You know, in, in Western countries and other countries, it, a lot of it's been made out of remote work and people don't want to go back to the offices. How do you think it's going to be in Shanghai? I think the same thing. Um, it won't change. This is the trend. This is the trend. Like we work, they, this is the trend of that. Not living in a, a static or stable place. People move around sometimes in Starbucks, other places, and they all move back to the home. Once it closed up, once the lockdown lift, lifted up. I think it takes some time for people to get used to go back to the office, especially for the younger generation. Um, I don't think they will quickly get used to go back to the office um, again. It takes some time. The people you talk to, both your clients, your employees, your, your friends, um, do they want to stay in Shanghai or do they not like Shanghai? Honestly, I think a lot of uh, aspects they're thinking about leaving. Like a lot of friends I made during the COVID lockdown, most of them are thinking about leaving Shanghai because they, 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 cannot, they cannot stand, put up with such a, such a sense of uncertainty. And they, they also, I mean, the uncertainty also affect their business as well. Like some people, you know, working in uh, restaurant business some people working in uh, as a chef they big, big time affected by the COVID and uh, I think talking about the kids from the Inlanders they some people said that uh, very interesting my business director a girl a, a lady very sophisticated lady he told me say he's a boss I don't know what's going on Shanghai should be the engine of China's economy. Then it slowed down. The, the engine is slowed down. What are gonna be, be the future and how are we going to do with it? I'm thinking, I told him that, I told her that maybe <laughs> Shanghai won't be the engine anymore. Maybe Shenzhen, it's a joke. But they, again, they have a doubt. They have uncertainty. That's why I said it's very important for the government to carry out some policies. Also, also carry out some real, things to make them feel that life will go back to the norm. How do you feel about the next six months here in Shanghai, both in terms of your private life and your professional life? Uh, my pri private life, I think, honestly, it's a very special case. My wife is from Malaysia, she's a Malaysian Chinese. Uh, she's thinking about leaving Shanghai for a while to take a breath because we have a baby who was born here, never met 
my wife's parents, my, my parents-in-law. So it's inhuman <laughs> that keeping separate each other. So we are thinking about uh, getting a visa and make them come back to Malaysia for a while. But maybe I stay here because I have to work here to feed them my family. Yeah, so I think for the next few months, um, I will experience such a, such a thing, such a feeling of separation for a while. Uh, it's like, uh, yeah, it's a little bit like man trauma, but another type of trauma. Um, this is one thing. The second thing is I feel that the impact of the economy, the negative impact of the economy is, will be getting, getting clear for the next two months. For example, because of COVID lockdown, China have already decided to postpone Asia games, right? Nobody knows whether they happen or not. A lot of projects, a lot of brands related to that. I have two clients, big clients, they canceled the projects, right? So in my book, the number is that directly wiped out. So in order to save people in the company, we need to work harder to get new business. But where are the new business are coming from? <laughs> we need to, you know, working even harder. So professional wise, I think, I don't think I can get more talents because a lot of talents are leaving and we don't have budget to hire talents. But at the same time with the existing exhausted talents, we need to get more business. So to me, professional wise, we're facing more challenge. I need to keep my team. I need to keep my talents in my company. Is it difficult to keep your team motivated and happy and healthy during this time? It's quite difficult. I think they are quite good kids. Um, they're trying to entertain themselves, but it will be important that you give them more hope. Even in front of you, I'm telling you the truth. But in front of them, I, I need to tell some white lies, give them more confidence. And uh, that goes back to one of the topics you mentioned about. Are they getting used to, to um, going back to the office? My thing is, I will try not pushing them, try to encouraging them to go back to the office, huddle each other, having lunch, drinks with them to make them feel that they are belonging to a big community, not just working alone at home. That can hopefully can boost the morale of the team. And that's, that's actually quite a big change in work culture, right? I mean, it used to always be very top-down and it's much more... Right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you're right. Actually, when we were young, it's like top-down. We follow the lead. But actually, for the past three to five years, you see a big change that the younger group generation rising up. They have their own point of view. We basically just partners with each other. And they never call me boss or even somebody call me boss. I said, just don't call me brother. Just, just call me brothers. Just call me brother. We work together. You have to, you have to live up to the way they doing things. Yeah, and again, the lockdown accelerate the whole thing and make even partnership between among your team getting important instead of top down pushing them to do anything. They can leave. Absolutely. They can go to their hometown. Or they can come to their daddy and mommy said, I need one more year of gap year. Right? It's a, it's a co quite complex topic about different generations' dreams. I think younger generation, they care more about what they really want to do instead of um, making a living. For us, we need to balance that. My, my generation, my, I'm, I'm late 70s, 80s generation. So we have to balance our dream and uh, how to make a living. Now it seems like it's true that make a living is more important than our dream. So yes, so we have to change by, you know, ourselves to, to, uh, to live up to the new ways of living of the younger generation. Yeah. Is there anything else that you think people should know about the Shanghai lockdown? I think that, um, how to say that? I think, I think Shanghai citizens are quite 
good. I have, I'm, I'm proud of them. Also, let's put it this way. Shanghai citizens are great. I'm proud of ourselves. They know how much they can push. They try their best. They're very collaborative. They never do any, how to say that? Um, they never do any violent things. They just trying to see the bright side of the things. Um, and I'm, I'm very proud of them for the past two months, all the citizens in Shanghai. Yeah. You know, you just, I have to ask about that because many, mm. many people say, I can't believe there's no violence here, there's no uprising here, and people are accepting this. It is really special, right? I got you. So I, I think it based on the nature of Shanghai. Shanghai has been the window of China to outside the world, especially Western world for more than 100 years, right? So Shanghai is trying to reconcile uh, both ends, both type of culture. And uh, in order to, um, in order to making uh, open to the world, more smooth actually Shanghai have to adapt to a lot of Western uh, thinking and the other point is the other thing is um, you know Shanghai is a migrant city a lot of people coming together Western side in the landers we're together uh, following the Constitution following the law of China trying to find a solution um, instead of conflict um, you of course you we, we you still see a lot of debating you still see a lot of people talking to the opposite side about um, about protecting their rights. I think this is something Shanghai is always doing, but in a very civilized way. Conflict doesn't 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 help anything in this country. Remember, stability and prosperity is the most important things here. So that shapes the culture of Ch Shanghai. Instead of having a lot of conflict, we'd rather all together thinking about what's the right way to do. If that way cross up, it doesn't work. At that end, we find another way. But the way has to follow the logic too. It has to be creative navigating the system. And then the system, what I mean by system is the constitution and the law here of China and the humanity. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That was, thank you very much. I'm very thank you, thank you. <laughs>